What is the volatility in financial markets doing to client confidence? Well, it's interesting. Sometimes you talk about volatility, and that, that implies that things go up and down. I, I think over the last two weeks, it's been mostly it's been down. Mostly down. Um, but, I, you know, it's interesting. I think the clients, I think management's felt this about the economy for a while now. I, I think that the slowness, um, the inability to maintain price has been a, a concern in boardrooms throughout the world for a while. What percentage of the CEOs you advise are planning for a recession? You know, it's interesting. I think many in their own mind are planning for slow growth. But it's an... In Sub two. I think so. I, you know, it's hard to say because what happens is you come on the camera here and people portray their best side. So in public, you'll hear people's optimistic hopes for the world. But I think what you're seeing in M&A is people's realistic thought that they have to take costs out of the system, any costs they can. How hard is it to raise debt financing for a deal? I think uh, if you're in the junk markets and you're in the lower end of the junk market, it's very difficult. And there's definitely a pricing reset going on. And if you're in certain industries, impossible. But I, I like do think... oil. Well, I'm energy, and I think some of the, uh, you know, I think retail is going to get harder and harder, and things that are uh, on the um, are closer to the edge of the economy. But um, I think the double B credits are just going through kind of a reset, and, and it will be reset. Look, I think there was no credit sp spectrum. The difference between high grade credit and low grade credit uh, two years ago was uh, was ridiculous, and I think you're now going back to normal. So if there's a repricing happening and some borrowers are being shut out of the market, what impact is that going to have on M&A volumes this year? Interestingly, we haven't seen any downturn in the conversations. I'll say that. Really? I think that um, the amount of discussion about what to do is, is I'm not going to say it's better, but it, it hasn't stopped. I, as I said. You think then there's a chance we could see... 2016 be as good a year as 2015? Depends how you measure it. So if you measure it on volume, maybe not. Four trillion some, plus, right. There was, there was some large, large transactions that are hard to replicate. If you talk about a number of transactions, possibly. There were, um, last year, I think, uh, unknown, it was, it was fairly flat on number. I don't have it right on the tip of my tongue. But I do think you're going to see the middle, middle companies, middle market companies, try to find ways to take costs out and up their credit and do things to solve problems that are coming as a result of the slowdown in the economy. Is the era of the mega deal over? No, no, I think it's, um, I think there's still things. Will we see done. another $100 billion transaction? Well, you know, I don't know the exact. Well, you're I'll, talking to a few people. <laughs> but I think that. Some um, who might do a deal look, like that. M&A right now is about taking out costs. And in order to take out enough costs to be relevant to a company, you have to merge with a fairly sizable company relative to yourself. And I think that's one of the reasons you've seen so many mega deals. There's been a lot of talk about restructuring in oil, but little action. Oil's at 28 bucks a barrel. What's it going to take? Well, first of all, it's, it's hard when oil changes by 5 6% a night. Very hard to. Most people who've entered into transactions, I think, are regretting, uh, if they were the buyer at least, um, at the time in which they did it. And look, I, I, don't, I think oil is going to be tough to do at these prices. I think you're going to find... Are you telling people to wait? You know, it depends on your situation and what you want to do. I mean, there's some that don't want to wait. It's hard to find uh, somebody on the other side who have, who have issues. But, uh, look, I think that there'll be lots of discussions in energy. And the question is, can this rapid a change in your underlying commodity, can, can you really come to the table and decide to sell and, and do a transaction at these prices? It's very difficult. Ken, what kinds of conversations are you having with sovereign wealth funds right now? sovereign institutions. You know, I know that I, I was watching your show before I came on, and I know there's this feeling that there's some tremendous uh, thing going on in the sovereign wealth funds. I don't sense it. Um, I sense that there's just as much re-jiggering going on at long-only mutual funds as there is, and I don't find anything at the sovereign wealth funds that lead me to believe they're acting any differently. Ken, great to see you. Good to and see good you. luck here at the World Economic Forum.